regaled Semek Lemon, the daughters of Kobani, the women who took on the Islamic State. Embark on a gripping journey through the eyes of the remarkable women who played an essential role in the fight against the Islamic State. ISIS, in the book, The Daughters of Kobani, The Women Who Took on the Islamic State, by Gail Semek Lemon. In this summary, we'll take you through the harrowing experiences of Azima, Rajda, Noraz, and Znarin, who fought as members of the Women's Protection Units, YPJ, a Kurdish militia born from inspiring ideology. Through their courageous actions, determination, and indomitable spirit, these women defied the long-held stereotypes about their gender and played a pivotal role in battles against ISIS, ultimately reshaping public perception about women's capabilities. Soccer Match to Civil War In 2000s, a soccer match between two rival clubs in Syria's Kamishli sparked unrest as police shot and killed unarmed Kurdish fans. This fueled the young Kurds' willingness to confront the Syrian government, which was put to the test again in 2011 during a peaceful protest against the Assad regime that led to violence. The conflict grew into a global conflagration with millions displaced and sovereign powers waging proxy wars. Young people in northeastern Syria joined the YPG to protect their regions from external attacks while fearing the Islamic extremism stirring among the anti-Assad rebels. The Contrast of Worldviews The book discusses the conflicting worldviews of ISIS and the People's Protection Units, YPG, embodied in their treatment of women. ISIS's ideology calls for the revival of the Islamic Empire of the 7th century with the strictest interpretation of Sharia law. This resulted in the oppression, subjugation, and enslavement of women. The Yazidis suffered this fate in Iraq when ISIS declared them devil worshippers and forced them to convert or face death. The YPG, on the other hand, is a Syrian Kurdish political group that was formed as a response to the aggression of the Syrian leader, Bashar al-Assad. It has its origins in the Kurdistan Workers' Party, which was founded by a charismatic Turkish activist named Abdullah Akalan. Their ideology is based on Kurdish rights, economic justice, and women's equality, with women being equal to men in a free society. In their fight against ISIS, YPG aimed to defend their ideology as much as their physical territory. Despite defeating ISIS, YPG still faces the challenge of achieving women's rights, the cornerstone of their worldview. Young Kurdish Women Fight for Equality Azima, Rajda, Noras, and Znarin were all raised in conservative Kurdish families, yet were determined to fight for women's liberation and Kurdish rights. They all joined the YPJ, the women's branch of the YPG, to fight for their beliefs. The YPJ faced its biggest challenge during the battle for Kobani. The Partnership That Saved Kobani In mid-September 2014, ISIS attacked Kobani, a strategic city that, if captured, would allow easy passage between Raqqa and Aleppo. The United States, desperate to find a partner to fight ISIS on the ground in Syria without committing American forces, turned to the Syrian Kurds in the People's Protection Units, YPG. The YPG had a history of standing up to ISIS and had recently rescued tens of thousands of Yazidis from Mount Sinjar. The partnership was formed, and just weeks later, ISIS launched an attack on Kobani, putting the alliance to the test. This is the story of how the partnership between the United States and the YPG saved Kobani. The Battle of Kobani The battle for the Syrian city of Kobani is a vivid account of the brutal conflict between the Kurdish forces and ISIS. The story follows the courageous efforts of Azima, Rajda, and Noras, three female commanders on the front lines, as they lead their troops to fight street by street and house by house against ISIS, which had already taken control of three-quarters of the city. The book describes in gripping detail the moment when Azima receives a distress call from her comrade Dalar, who is trapped inside a building with other soldiers, and how she manages to rescue them despite facing continuous fire from ISIS. The story takes a turn when Azima requests an airstrike from the Americans to provide cover for their rescue mission, resulting in the survival of all 25 soldiers. 
The book also portrays the impact of American aid on the battle as they send airdrops at night to deliver much-needed medical supplies, ammunition, and arms to Kobani. Despite the relentless attacks from ISIS, the Kurdish forces managed to ward off their advances with the support of the Americans. Finally, the author highlights the unwavering spirit of Noras, who relentlessly stood on the YPG and YPJ headquarters waiting for the day when the conflict would end. Azima's Journey to Victory Azima, a Kurdish fighter, faces a life-threatening injury in a battle against ISIS in Kobani. With the help of American air support, the Kurdish ground forces, including Azima, emerged victorious, which proved a partnership they could trust. The U.S. reached out to the Kurds to include Arabs in their ranks. The coalition was later named the Syrian Democratic Forces, SDF, to reflect inclusivity, bringing together Syrians of all backgrounds. Leading the fight The Syrian Democratic Forces, SDF, were tasked with liberating the northern Syrian city of Manbij from the clutches of ISIS. The city was important since it was a transit point for foreign recruits joining the terrorist group. SDF boats had to cross the Euphrates, which proved to be a challenge since ISIS held the high ground. However, the SDF, led by Noras and other leaders like Snarin, pressed on with the mission. The battle was brutal, with ISIS using car bombs, hidden explosives, and human shields. Znarin's team lost several soldiers to ISIS snipers, which affected morale. Still, she drew inspiration from Nora's speech to keep fighting for humanity. After several setbacks, the city was finally liberated from ISIS on August 12. This victory transformed Znarin from a follower to a leader of her own fighting force. Rajda and her forces conquer Raqqa Rajda leads her diverse forces in a grueling campaign to capture Raqqa, the capital of ISIS. The fight lasts for months and is marked by sniper fire, suicide bombings, and hidden mines. Despite exhaustion and loss, Rajda's forces capture the city, ultimately prompting tribal elders to broker a deal for safe passage for the remaining ISIS fighters. The battle ends in mid-October, and the black flag of ISIS gives way to the yellow flag of the SDF. Victory Beyond Liberation Rajda and her comrades celebrate their victory over the Islamic State in Paradise Square, now known as Naim Square, acknowledging the grueling sacrifices that made it possible. Their hope for a better future centers around a radical constitution that enshrines women's freedoms and rights, thanks to the actions of brave women who fought as snipers and commanders, and proved women can be men's equals. Witness the powerful story of these brave female fighters as they challenge the brutal framework enforced by ISIS and fight, not just for the freedom of those under the rule of ISIS, but also for women's rights and equality. Throughout their journey, from Kobani to Raqqa, these women prove that anything is possible when one is determined to make a change. As members of the YPJ and the Syrian Democratic Forces, Azima, Rajda, Noraz, and Znarin became symbols of the strength and resilience of women amid the chaos of war, emboldening a generation to envision a society where women have equal rights and opportunities. The Daughters of Kobani is a powerful testimony to their achievements and the profound impact they had on the world's understanding of gender equality and women's capabilities.